And, uh, well, if you haven't noticed, this, I have made a new channel for uploading these, uh, reading videos or whatever. But, um, yeah. <laughs> This is the first actually original video for this channel, like, I'm, I mostly made it so, uh, I can, like, keep this clutter off my main channel so the videos I actually put effort into don't just get drowned out. <laughs> and I would just call this the low quality let's read, but, uh, considering I do things other than this reading, that hive swap thing, and, uh... There's also a video called the low. I mean, I, there's a channel called the low quality. Let's read the low quality. Let's read. Uh, over. Oh, oh, the low effort. Let's read. Okay, so I could technically call it that, but nah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm here with Homestuck. I should probably, uh, what are the music albums? Alright. I guess I'll be playing these in the background to probably, uh, adjust my volume some. Uh, go down to frickin' five. Pet pet. Nah, two is the best volume for this. Alright. And then, uh... Uh... Alright. Homestuck Volume 1. Just the first one! Wait. All right, now let us begin with, uh, okay, these are actually kind of out of order here. Is there a more in order one? Aha. Aha! Now. Let us start with the Okay, maybe no. Maybe I should turn this up a bit. Yeah, ten seems fine. And boosh. Home stuff. Oh oh yeah, I should probably uh disable this. How do I how do I d disable this? Disable all. I guess this is, these are all useful. Oh boy. Yep. Useful. And boosh. Let's go with Homestuck. A young man stands in his bedroom. It just so happens that today, the 13th of April, 2009, is this young man's birthday. Though, though it was, though it is only today he, bleh, though it was 13 years ago he was given life, it is only today he will be given a name. What will the name of this young man be? And pause, hold on. It has been four and a half goddamn minutes, and I'm still not past page one. Let's just... Bleh. Probably, yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, that... I'm... This is, like, how far I'm gonna be reading, because, uh... Boosh. Homesuck reread schedule. Heck you, I'm stealing your hard work and using it for myself. Blech. Anyway, uh... 
Though it's 13 years ago, he was given life. It is only today he will be given a name. What will the name of this young man be? Enter name. Wow, how fitting music. <laughs> Zeus Mel Poop Lord. Try again, smartass. Try again. John Egbert. Nah, look how happy he is. Enter name. Your name is John. As was previously mentioned, it is your birthday. A number of cakes are scattered about your room. You have a variety of interests. You have a passion for really terrible movies. You like to program computers, but you are not very good at it. You have a fondness for paranormal lore and are an aspiring amateur magician. You also like to play games sometimes. What will you do? Ah, uh, heck, wrong thing. John, quickly retrieve arms from drawer. Your arms are near magic chest, poop lord. R re remove cake from magic chest. Oh yeah, it, there's a little problem soup poster there. Out of sympathy for John's perceived lack of arms, you pick up the cake for him and put it on his bed. John, quickly retrieve arms from magic chest. Oh yeah, I guess I should like allow flash. You retrieve your fake arms from the chest. You use these for hilarious antics. Your caps log you you caps log them in your Silidex. You have no idea what that actually means though. There are other items in the chest. John, examine contents of chest. In here, you keep an array of humorous and mystical artifacts, each one a devastating weapon in the hands of a skilled magician or a cunning prankster. You are neither of these things. Among the artifacts are two, two, fake arms, currently capsulogged in your Silidex, one, one, pair of trick handcuffs, one, one, stunt sword, one, one, magician's hat, one, one, pair of beagle puss glasses, Several tildy smoke pellets, several tildy blood capsules, and one one copy of Colonel Sastiker's Dotson text of magical frivolity and practical japery, and one one copy of Harry Anderson's Wise Guy by Mike Caveney. Some of this stuff may come in handy at some point. For now, you just decide to take the smoke pellets. John Capslog smoke pellets. You stole the smoke pellets on one of your capsule cards in your Silidex. You still aren't totally sure what that means, but you are starting to get the hang of the vernacular at least. You have two empty capsule cards remaining. John, equip fake arms. You aren't totally sure if equip is a verb copacetic with the abstract behavioral medium in which you dwell, but you give it a try anyway. Unfortunately, you cannot access the fake arms. Their card is underneath the one you just used to capsule out the smoke pellets. You will have to use the pellets first in order to access the arms, but this is probably unadvisable since you just make your room lousy with smoke. Your Silodex's fetch modus is currently dictated by the logic of a stacked data structure. You were never all that great with data structures, and you find the concept puzzling and mildly irritating. But, with any hope, perhaps you would advance new, more practical fetch modi for your Silodex with a little more experience. John, examine Problem Sleuth poster. There it is. Is it even possible to get any more hard-boiled than that? You really doubt it. This poster was one of your wisest purchases. On to the store we go! We have to buy everything, especially the <laughs> Sweet Bro and Hella Jeff barbecue sauce. <laughs> but yeah, there's a lot of merch here. There's even some problems with merch. All of this may be sold out, but I own it. Oh, wait, what the hell is... Oh my god. What the fuck? Yeah, if you don't, if you are using this for your first time and don't know what Sweet Bro and Hella Jeff is, that'll come in quite a bit later. There's a nice spot on the wall next to it. You've been meaning to hang another poster there soon. 
John, read note on drawer. Happy birthday, son. I am so proud of you. This note is rich with aromas of fiery aftershaves and colognes. Beside the note is a rolled up poster. John, take poster. Another birthday artifact. You wonder what is printed on the poster. You need some way to hang it up. You, you need some way to hang it on your wall. John, acquire a hammer and nails. They will come in handy. Oh boy. Why do you John, why do you have nails just laying on the ground? How long have they been there? You're going to If you just leave them there, you're going to step on them and like severely hurt your foot. Oh god. <laughs> you first place a hammer into your Silidex, but now all of your caps lock cards are full. You wonder what will happen if you try to take the nails. You guess it doesn't hurt to try. John, take nails. You you capture log four four nails into the top card and push all the artifacts down the card. The fake arms are pushed entirely out of the deck. Oh well, they're probably completely useless anyway, but you probably don't want to do that again unless you want to drop the smoke pellets and suffer the consequences. In any case, you now feel like you have gathered enough things to get down to business and do some really important stuff. The next thing you will do will probably be exceptionally meaningful. John. Uh, squawk like an imbecile and shit on your desk. This is the dumbest idea you've had in weeks! Stupid, stupid, stupid! And yet, the polished surface of your desk, it beckons. John, combine the nails and hammer. You merge the top two cards. The hammer and nail are now caps logged on the same card and can be used together. John, use hammer and nails on poster. You use the hammer and nails card in conjunction with the card beneath it. John, nail poster to wall. You use the hammer, nails, and poster on the blank space on the wall. It's glorious. Exactly what you wanted. The old man really came through this time. John, examine Con Air poster. Put the bunny back in the box. I said, put the bunny back in the box. Why couldn't you put the bunny back in the box? John, examine Deep Impact poster. Morgan Freeman's genteel homespun mannerisms were perfect qualities for a president residing over a crisis. Ocean's Fall, City, uh, <laughs> Ocean's Rise, City Fall, Hope Survives. Wow! Films about impending apocalypse fascinate you, plus a black president? Now you've seen any everything. <laughs> That's some pretty outdated frickin' uh, humor. <laughs> uh, gee. So, Homestuck started in 2009. Obama wasn't president for that long, so it was, uh... That was kind of a jab at that. John, examine calendar. You mark your birthday, the 13th of April. Another day you marked was supposed to be the arrival date for the highly touted Suburb Beta launch. Here, we have Homestuck, but... Smooth. A young man stands in his bedroom. It just so happens that today, the 10th of April, is this young man's birthday. Though it was 10 years ago he was given life, it is today he will be given a name. What will the name of this young man be? Enter name. Do smell poop lord. Try again, smartass. Try again. John Egbert. Ding. Examine room. Your name is John. As was previously mentioned, it is your birthday. A number of cakes are scattered about your room. You have a variety of interests. You have a passion for really terrible movies. You like to program computers, but you are not very good at it. You have a fondness for paranormal lore and are an aspiring amateur magician. You also like to play games sometimes. What will you do? John, quickly retrieve arms from drawer. Mm. 
Whenever you see this icon, it means there's something in the room nearby that can be clicked, and you should click it. Oh, gee. John, move green icon to magic chest and click. You know, I never actually realized there's a door here. Like, in his bed. Huh. The, the icon is not a visible or tangible entity. Characters in the game cannot interact with it, you blubbering imbecile. John, remove cake from magic chest. Out of sympathy for John's perceived lack of arms, you pick up the cake for him and put it on his bed. Yes, look, he's very happy. Let's just... E. John, quickly retrieve arms from magic chest. You retrieve your fake arms from the chest. You use these sometimes for hilarious antics. You place them in your Silodex. There are other items in the chest. Thanks for playing the Homesec Beta! The stable release is now available for you to play. Here is the stable release. So, the Homesec Beta was kind of... Andrew Hussey actually wanted to make Homesec entirely in Flash, but uh... That was way too time consuming and he realized he couldn't really do it, so three days into it, he... He cancelled it and remade Homestuck like it is now. Now? It's been three days already. It's starting to become a sore subject with you. John, eat cake. You are sick to death of cake! You've been eating it all day, and you have no intention of clogging your Silodex with it either. The cake stays put for now. You hear a notice from your computer. Someone is messaging you. John, Examine incoming message. Oh god. You pull up to your computer. This is where you spend most of your time. You decorate your desktop with some rather handsome wallpaper which you made yourself. You are really proud of it. The desktop is also littered with various programming project files. You are so bad at, progr at programming sometimes you wonder why you even bother with it. Your pest of application is flashing. Someone is trying to get in touch with you. Oh boy, I can't wait to do voice acting, but first. So, this... Alright, so first, system, the basic thing every computer have. Typhius, John's web browser. Pestertrum, John's Discord. Or Skype, or whatever. P... F... D cake. And fuck, 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 cake are all... And... Ah... Uh, ass. Those are all programming files. We'll learn more about ass later, but cake cake is entirely useless and it goes nowhere. Forget about cake. It may be delicious, but cake is dumb. <laughs> John says so. <laughs> John, open Pester Chum. Only one of your chums is logged in. He sent you a message. John, open message. So, originally, uh, all the pester logs were supposed to be based off real conversations, but in the end, only two pester logs only actually ended up doing that. This one, and one much later in the story. Act 3, I think. Turntech Godhead began pestering Echobiologist at 1613. Hey, so what sort of loot? So, hey, so what sort of insane loot did you wait break in today? I got a little monster's poster. It's so awesome. I'm going to watch it again today. The apple juice scene was so funny. Let me just turn this a little bit more down. There. Oh hell, that is such a coincidence. I just found an unopened container of apple juice in my closet. It is like fucking Christmas up in here. Okay, that's fine. But I just have one question and then a word of caution. Have you ever seen a movie called Little Monsters starring Ma Howie Mandel and Fred Savage? But the seal on the bottle is unbroken. Are you suggesting someone put piss in my apple juice at the factory? All I'm saying is, don't you think monster ha Howie Mandel has the power to do something as simple as reseal a bottle? Try using your brain, numbnuts. 
why did the fat kid or whoever drank it know what piss tasted like? I mean, his reaction was not instantaneous. It was the 15th day in a row Howie Mandel peed in his juice. Okay, I can accept that. Monster B-list celebrity douchebags are cunning and persistent pranksters. Also, Fred Savage has a really punchable face, but who cares about this? Let's stop talking about it. Did you get the beta yet? No, did you? Man, I got two copies already, but I don't care. I'm not going to play it or anything. This game sounds boring. Did you see how it got slammed in Game Bro? Game Bro is a joke, and we both know it. Yeah. Hey, why don't you go check your mail? Maybe it's here now. All right. John, look out window. You see the view of your yard from your window. Hanging from the tree is your tire swing. In a kid's yard, a tree without a tire swing is like a proper gentleman without a monocle. That is to say, he can hardly be considered a terribly proper gentleman at all. And there, beside your driveway, is the mailbox. John, examine mailbox. This... I don't know what it is about that, but I do really like this freaking shading. And the tree like that actually looks pretty beautiful. I don't know why. The little red arm sw- The little red arm swingy dilly thing or whatever it is called- Or whatever it is called is flipped up. What the hell is that thing called anyway? You do not have time for these semantics. The red flippy lever thing means you have new mail and that means the beta might be here. John, go outside and check mailbox. You are about to hurry downstairs when you hear a car pull into the driveway. It looks like your dad has returned from the grocery store. Uh, great. He is beating you to the mail. John, forget it. Check mail later. If you go downstairs to get it, he will likely monopolize hours of your time. You decide to chill out up here for a while until the dust settles. Sometimes, you feel like you are trapped in this room. Stuck, if you will, in a sense which possibly borders, borders on the titular. And now, your chum is pestering you again. The clockwork of friendship turns ceaselessly, operating the swing lever dillies of harassment in perpetuity. Whatever, the dude can just hold his damn horses. Ah, uh, but he's my favorite. Well, I guess he's not my favorite kid. There's one other I like more, but John, examine games on CD rack. Here we have Bard Quest, The Caper Havers, Problem Sleuth, and it Don't Stop. Uh, I think this is Jailbreak? Yeah, it's, it's Jailbreak. Ghostbusters 2 MMORPG, which actually is not a real game, don't be fooled by its lies! Little Monsters, wait, Little Monsters video game, movie video game, oh, okay, uh, volume. it might actually be hard to find a Homestuck Volume 2 thing, but I shall try. Ah, it's gonna be. Oh. Heck. Yeah, someone has been going on like a copyright streak recently, taking down all of their songs in the Homestuck soundtrack, and uh. Wait, is this. Oh. Heck. Yeah, um, well, this one was the last two. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think I'll be able to find it on YouTube.
I can't find it. Ha! You know what? Volumes 1 through 4 full. Aha! There we go. This will work for now. Time to... Alright. Well. Alright. This should... Wait, this... I don't think this has all the... Alright, Suburban Jungle Brief Mix. No, it does not have everything. <sighs> so, anything marked in red is removed. Hmm. Well, heck. Well, I do know somewhere I could find it. Home stuck music album download tumblr. Here. Volume 2. There we go. Illegal downloads. Bleh. You put countless man hours into this assortment of quality titles. And now, uh. Bleh. Can I move that down here? Uh. Shush. I've had you for a freaking half a year now. You can't fool me. The and now play all. Sure. Ah, frick. Okay. Um. I wanna turn you down to three. All right. John, read Colonel Sassaker's daunting text. You decide to consult with the Colonel's bottomless wisdom. Good grief, this thing is huge. It could kill a cat if you dropped it. But to really dig into this hefty book, you will have to caps log it. You're not sure you are ready to log jam your other, other artifacts beneath it just yet. John, caps log fake arms again. What did you just say? You don't want to clog up your... Oh, Jesus. In a momentary lapse of concentration, you accidentally caps log the arms again. John, set pessimism status to bully. You don't think the situation is quite dire enough to go all the way to rancorous, but you still feel the pessimism pester chum client should reflect their mood change in some way. Bully will have to do. You guess. This, unsurprisingly, does nothing whatsoever. Alright, you forgot your chum is still pestering you. John, answer chum. Is it there? Please say yes. Maybe you can play with TT. She's been pestering me all day about it. She's mecking on me so hard I start to feel embarrassed for her. I mean, not that I can blame her or anything. Yes, it is understandable because you are really attractive. I am attracted to you. Thank you. JK, <laughs> no, I don't have it yet. My dad has the mail, and I guess I have to go get it from him and see if he, it's there. And I've been busy spending all afternoon shitting around with my stupid silly It's so frustrating. What's your modus? What? How do you retrieve artifacts from it? Oh, like, one at a time, I guess. And if I put too much in, something falls out. Stack? <laughs> what is yours? Hashmap, my bro taught me a few tricks. He basically knows everything and is awesome. What the hell is that? You probably brush up on your data structures. I guess. Did you at least allocate your strife specifics? No. It could free up a card for you, plus let you attack stuff of whenever things get too hot to handle, which is never. What have you got? Well, I've got a hammer, but it's trapped under some arms. Well, you really suck at this, don't you? Just get rid of the arms and then allocate the hammer to your specifics. How? I don't know, just use the arms on any old thing and see if it works. John, combine fake arms with cake. You stick the fake arms and the cake on your bed. This definitely makes a cake at least 300% more hilarious. 
You're sure Colonel Sassiger would know the precise index of elevated hilarity. John, allocate strife. Uh, the allocate hammer to strife specifics. We have a lot of stuff here. Everything from pizza cutter kind to frickin' fancy Santa kind. Pepper, pepper mill. There's, there are some, there's some funny stuff if you look carefully. Like, uh, firework kind, <laughs> candlestick kind. Bowling pin guy? I guess that's... Yeah, makes... Fire extinguisher kind. Yeah, enough with that. You check the back of your strife specifics for the kind of stratus you have in mind for it. Hammer kind. John, select hammer. Your strife specifics has been allocated with a hammer kind abstratus. The hammer has been moved from your caps lock deck to your strife deck. John, report progress to TG. Okay, I did it. Hammerkind? Yeah. Okay, that will be the permanent allocation for your specibus. I guess I should have mentioned that. Uh. Hope you like hammers, dude. Yeah, that's fine, I guess. I can't imagine it's going to be all that relevant. John, caps log colonel's big book. Now that you've got some space in your silhouette to work with, you figure you might as well start squandering it immediately. Ordinarily, this ridiculous book would be way too heavy to carry around in any practical way. You guess maybe this is one respect in which a card presents some convenience. John, examine Game Bro magazine. Game Bro! Superb! Why the Game of the Year or whatever isn't as good as some other stuff I like that's better. John, read article. So, okay, Suburb is this game that a lot of cats seem hella pumped of, and this beta is sitting on my desk for a review, so I'm like, yeah, man, I'll write something. But, I don't know, I'm like, so this is about houses of some, or some noise? That's fine, I'm sure that's like fucking dynamite in a handbag or some bro stuffs. But all I'm saying is, when do you get to thrash anything? While you're playing a house or some shit, are you ever in jeopardy of getting mud on your dog's dress or whatever from busting out? And I quote, the bad stunts all wicked up ends. Know what I'm saying, bro yo ma? I did actually play this game, but I gave it 1.5 hats out of 5 hats to keep it real. At this point, I'd like to give a shout out over to my boy Dennis, who, who was over the other day. We were going to chill him from the dark night, and he was so psyched of it, y'all. To this one time, he was leaning against the screen door, and the ship popped open, and the back deck was wet, and he slipped down the steps and broke his thumb on the lawn. It wasn't a long fall, but hey. I guess a thumb bone wasn't made for supporting the brunt of a huge, useless tool against wet grass. You never did watch a Dark Knight on, on account of Ron trucking his ball and candy ass girth to the hospital. But it's cool. I still got another watch of me, bro, tell Rhonda. Bro, note. Dennis was so wasted. Haha, <laughs> I mean, damn. John, catch log game, bro. It might come in handy if you ever need something that burns easily. <laughs> John, Caps Lock Magician's Hat. You expend your final card on the Magician's Hat. John, get funny glasses too. You don't have a free card in your Silidex. However, you are able to merge a Beagle Puss with a Magician's Hat to create a clever disguise. Let me just direct everyone's attention to this right here. I hate this. I hate it so much. <laughs> oh god. Oh yeah. John, where disguise the fool dad? John, who is this John you speak of? You're quite certain there has never been nor ever will be. Yeah, this is a really shitty disguise. While you're wearing the items, they remain on the card, but it is temporarily removed from the deck, thus freeing up the cards beneath it. John, leave room. You exit into the hallway. On one hall hangs a picture who's of a fellow who sure knows how to have a laugh, a man after your own heart. You always thought he looked a lot like Michael Sarah, but your dad swears on the many hallowed tombs of Egypt that it is not. 
You're not sure about that, though. I... I'm not quite sure who this is. Oh. Oh. Let's... Why, why would you make a video about this? Why would you make a video documenting a, a celebrity's pain? <laughs> but your dad swears a, a bleh. You're not sure about that, though. On the other wall is one of your dad's stupid clowns, or harlequins, as he is quick to correct anyone who would venture such brazen assumption. John, go downstairs. Ow. The cursed odor of fresh bacon wafts into your newfound nostrils. Something is brewing in the kitchen. It must be the connivings of your arch nemesis, Betty Crocker, and the rich, buttery aroma of your hot stinks to high heaven. Oh boy. When. I wonder. Should I do a dramatic reading of the Wikipedia page for Betty Crocker? <laughs> This mission is going to be more difficult than you imagined. John, admire Harlequins. You check out the shelves of fanciful Harlequins. Look at this fucking garbage. You hate this stuff. Funny is funny, but your dad sure can be a real cornball. Sometimes at night, you pray for burglars. But what did they ever do to you? John, no! John, examine fireplace. A bright orange flame flickers in the fireplace. It doesn't matter that it's April and not terribly chilly outside. In a home, a fireplace needs a fire because that's what fireplace is for. A fire belongs in the fireplace, damn it! Catapultagorically, cat at all times, without exception. Look at this, look at this funny pun he made. He made a new word. So, he had to use it as a pun. Bl blue. Okay, yeah. Captcha. Yes. Captcha log. The, you see? Capture log is a new word. Wait. Wait, is it? Is it actually a real word? Okay. One of the. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> you can't escape them. You cannot escape Hobstuck. <coughs> what the fuck? You. Shut up. What the, what the heck do you want from me? Why'd you say hello to me? Heck you. <laughs> As domestic myth of unaccountable origin holds, a home borrows the spirit of the flame for as long as it makes a guess of it, much as the moon takes liberty with the sun's rays. The moon's an errant thief, and her pale fire she snatches from the sun. Mark Twain. You are almost certain Mark Twain said that. He did not say that. Not a single, not a single quote in Homestuck is attributed correctly. It was actually said by William Shakespeare. Maybe. I think. I. Ah. Yep. John, toss game bro into fire. Dennis, no! My only friend! <laughs> Is it?
that actually Dennis? Or is, I always thought it was a Game Bro guy, but is that Dennis? Hmm. It doesn't burn as quickly as you hoped. Each Game Bro magazine is guaranteed to be printed on 40% recycled asbestos. For big ups to Mother Earth, yo. John, fondly regard cremation. You examine the sacred urn containing your departed Nana's ashes. Isn't this like a problem sleuth reference? When your father gives her a portrait of wit <laughs> When your father gives her a portrait of wistful glance now and then, you can tell it brings back painful memories. A tall bookshelf, a ladder, an unabridged colonial sassigers. He never wants to talk about it. John Topple Urn. You clumsily mishandled the sacred urn. Ash is everywhere. In retrospect, upon mulling cinematic tropes regarding ash-filled urns, this outcome was a virtual certainty. You'd probably better clean it up before Dad finds it. John, combine Father's pipe with clever disguise. You think now would be a good time to beef up your clever disguise. John, examine oversized gifts. Champ, you can do it. Y you can do anything if you put your mind to it. I believe in you. Contemplating what could be inside this package is sort of exciting, but it makes you a little nervous at the same time. John, open large present. Oh, hell no. John, caps log ashes. First, you prop the Harlequin doll up on the couch. Having it in the middle of the floor sprawled out all akimbo like that struck you as unseemly. You capture log the ashes to your available card. John, combine ashes with urn. You merge the sacred urn with the ashes. Most of the ash is back in the urn, but it's a total mess. Really, it probably would have been tidier if you just used a broom and dustpan. John, put, put, put urn back. No one will be the wiser. Except maybe for people with eyes. John, go get fake arms again. You just got another brilliant idea for something to do with those pointless arms. You pry them out of the cake and caps log them. Looks like Pestrichum is acting up again. John, examine third and fourth walls of room. Armageddon. Thank, thank you, Andrew Hussey. We totally wanted to see more of John's terrible movie posters. But can we just... Ghost Dad? Okay, uh... Let's just keep that there. Alright. John, check Pester Chum. Wait. Alright. Another one of your chums is messaging you. John, check message. <clears throat> oh boy, time for a voice I can't do very well. <clears throat> I understand you have recently come into possession of the better release of the Game of the Year as featured in respectable periodicals, such as Game Bro Magazine. That's an ugly rumor. Whoever told you that is a filthy liar, and you should probably stop hitting on him all the time or whatever. I can control myself. I must have a weakness for insufferable pricks. Anyway, I still haven't checked the mail. My dad has it. I'm trying to go get it from him, so BRB. John? What? You're wearing one of your disguises now, aren't you? You are typing to me while wearing something ridiculous. No, why would you even think that? That's so stupid. Okay, why don't you go get the game from your father? Alright, wish me luck. Oh. By the way, JK, I was wearing a funny disguise this whole time. Gotcha! <laughs> I know, John. John, go back downstairs. So, also, uh, apparently there were a bunch of theories that apparently Rose could see John somehow, and they completely overlo overlooked the fact that Rose mu TT might just be a close friend of John's. And just knows his typical behavior and whatever. John, go back downstairs. 
You can now execute that brilliant idea you had. There should be just enough frosting on the fake arms to serve as an adequate adhesive. John, attach arms to doll. <laughs> you don't care what Colonel Sassiger says. That makes it at least a million percent funnier. John, inspect burnt paper on the floor. Broborone! <sighs> Apparently, Toborone is some candy that's at frickin' airports or something. I have never heard of it until Broborone showed me that Toborone exists. <sighs> no. <laughs> you put this back in the fire where it belongs. John, throw present wrap in the fire. But what about the bow, sad face? <laughs> as long as you're cleaning up. John, caps log doll. You can carry hefty items, but that thing is just way too big. Get real. Besides, you don't even want it. John, read Colonel Sassiker's text. The Creepy Crawlies. How's bells? We are having a mighty sporting time of it. Hold fast, my intrepid fellow prank smiths. We've, ne we've merely nicked the mahogany of our daping chests. If I may direct the incisive oval of your beagle push to the wriggling regency of rubble bu rub rubber bugs, plastic parasites, squirming serpents, pliable pests, and every such order and file of creepy crawly, land sakes of what live, we are cooking with petrol now. In further exhibits, we shall dwell on artifacts useful to your exploits. Is your pappy's rod and real handy? What about a bit of iron cord? It shouldn't prove elusive. Bring those writhing rascals alive and set the nerves of some old maid to the wreck of Hesperus. Do you have a bothersome aunt who never seems trouble to find ways when you're sunny afternoon? A broad, splintery fence. A bucket of whitewash, perhaps? By gum, you'll fix her wagon. And what of that tawny gent who puts his lackadaisical lean near the sassafarilla font. You will have that listless octoroons find the spring in this step just yet. You thought about consulting the text to determine exactly how hilarious the doll is now, but this text is way too big to navigate in a timely fashion. You decide to just forget it. I... I need a drink at this point, so, uh... I... I probably don't need to say why I paused the recording so much, but I shall return. Blah. Blah. Return. It's freaking seamless. It's like I was... It's like I was never gone. Boosh. <clears throat> John, find dad and retrieve mail. It is. Okay, yeah, it is recording. The door on the left leads to the kitchen from which the smell of baking wafts, a powerful aroma which could lift the, which could, li which could lift an especially portly hobo off his feet. The door on the right leads to the study, where your dad spent a lot of time. He could be in either room. Where will you go? John, go in the study. It doesn't look like he's in here right now. John, examine father's desk. On the desk is a deck of playing cards, one of your dad's pipes, the April issue of the Serious Jester magazine, and a stray caps lock card. There's also a can of peanuts on the desk. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, dad, you won't be falling for that one anytime soon. A severe peanut allergy is a terrible affliction to cope with. John, upgrade costume with hat from hat rack. You swap the magician's hat with the bowler hat. This disguise is somewhat less funny looking, but a lot more distinguished looking. John, combine second pipe with clever disguise. Your dad maintains numerous pipes around the household. A father without a pipe is like a strapping roughneck without a toothpick. That is to say, he is a rather piss poor excuse for a roughneck if you ask me. You'd rather not take the pipe though, the first one tastes bad enough as it is. How you suffer for your comedy. John, examine caps log card. Yes, this will be perfect for expanding the space in your Scylla. John, caps log, caps log card. 
Ugh. S. John, play a haunting piano refrain. Wow, it sure looks like you have a lot of stuff to do. You better get on this all right away and not get distracted by anything. Wowie zowie! <laughs> Pages including sound will be preceded by S in the command. John, play 52 pickup. You play the prankster's favorite card game, even though you are alone in the room, thus rendering it an especially foolish version of Solitaire. So stupid, look at this mess! The peanut gallery over there is sure getting a kick out of it. You are allergic to their scorn. John, attempt to leave the house. You go back into the living room and contemplate checking the mailbox outside. You think perhaps you should exhaust all possibilities before plunging headlong into a dad encounter. Your television is currently airing a commercial. John, exit. You exit the house. John, check mail. Predictably, the mailbox is empty. You have already been scooped by your father. The streets are empty. Wind skims the voids, keeping neighbors apart, as if grazing the hollow of a cut reed or, say, a plundered mailbox. A familiar note is produced. It's the one desolation plays to keep its instrument in tune. It is your thirteenth birthday, and with all twelve preceding it, something feels missing from your life. The game presently eluding you is only the latest light the is only the latest slate of hand in the in the repertoire of an unseen riddler, one to engender a sense of not of mirth, but of lack. His coarse schemes are those less of a prankster than a common pickpocket. His riddle is absence itself. It is a mystery dispersing altogether like the moon's faint reflection with even one pebble of inquiry dropped in its black well. It is the most diabolical riddle of all. Absence diminishes little passions and increases great ones as the wind extinguishes candles and fans the fire. Walt Whitman. Yes, you are certain Walt Whitman said that. 100% positive. You have a feeling it is going to be a long day. This quote was by whoever the fuck that is. Who are you? <laughs> okay, I legitimately don't know who this person is, but they're French. I'll have to ask someone about that later. Leave a sur John, leave a surprise for the mailman. N no! John, see if your father left the mail in the car. The door is locked and your dad has the car keys. You peer in through the driver's side window. You don't see any mail, but you do see a green package. There's also something underneath it that looks like a slip of paper. 
could these items have come in the mail? You don't see anything else that's usually in the mail, like bills and coupons. Maybe your dad forgot to take this stuff inside. John, spy in the kitchen. You try to get a gander through the kitchen window, but you can't see a whole lot. It seems your dad has been doing so much baking the glass has steamed up. God, he is so weird. But you can you can see what's on the table just beside the window. It looks like the mail is here. Included among it is a red package, some bills, your dad's PDA, and an envelope that appears to, sus to be suspiciously labeled with a suburb logo. Could it be? Unfortunately, the window is locked. Is that it? Yes, that that's it. Alright. Next up. Homestuck Volume 3. Let's see if we can find this on YouTube. Oh. Hmm. No, we can't. Guess those are something. Homestuck music. All right. I would actually support the creators, but the original first four volumes are not available. I I I will buy every single other one and download it itself, but the original volumes. Are pretty much lost forever. Bork. Just distant Bork. Bork Bork Bork. Heck. Sniff. Heck. She's gonna be barking for a while. And it's Definitely picking up on the mic. Yes, I know. It's quote unquote free trial. Nope. When Roar when Roar is completely free. Um play all. Ah, ah! Fuck! I thought it would be quiet! There. Oh, so I uh, close you. And boosh. Alright. John, go back into the kitchen. You have no other choice. You are going in. Clever disguise, it's time to work your magic. S. John, enter. Your dad sees right through your costume. You don't know what you're even thinking with this foolish ruse. You have unequipped the clever disguise. Your dad wields a dreaded artifact of confection. He stands between you and the mail. There is only one way to settle this. S. Strife. Aggrieve! Auto pastry. Abjure. Guardian Republic Coddle Brand. Don't smite. He is determined to do this. But he won't because, John, retrieve the package and flee to your room. You cannot abscond. This pesky guardian, guardian is blocking your path. You will need to engineer some sort of distraction. And now, he brandishes yet another artifact of convention. The man is ruthless. You better brace for impact in the most comedically striking fashion possible. John, equip disguise for defense. 
The Beagle Aegis absorbs the brunt of the treats. Looks like Dad will enjoy the pranks of the Gambit on that exchange, as is usually the case. John, Capture Capture Log Python. You just basically robbed your dad. <laughs> you take the Python and unequip the Beagle Puss. Everything in your Silex is pushed back a card. The smoke pellets are ejected from the deck. Yes, this could be just a distraction you were. Nothing happens. What a huge letdown. John, take the cake. When two great forces oppose each other, the victory will go to the one that knows how to yield. Oscar Wilde. Let's see who this uh, is actually by. Leo Tzu. Also don't know who that is. Be the one who knows how to yield. <laughs> Wise words by a man who likely could resist everything but temptation. The cake forces Colonel Sassiger's text out of your Silodex. Sassiger, you beautiful bastard! Now's your chance! John, abscond. Now that ba dad, dad is not dad. He's a good dad, okay? <laughs> Crying noises. Now that dad is busy plucking the smoke detector, you can safely sneak away. John, take PDA. You snag your dad's PDA. Maybe later you'll switch the background image to something hilarious as a prank. Besides, it may come in handy later. Your spare capsule log card is forced out of the Silodex and consequently integrated with the deck. You now have five cards to work with. John, take package. This red package is addressed, is addressed to you. John, take envelope. You got the Suburb Beta! John, exit kitchen. The One of the arms has fallen into the cake. John, get cake on couch. You capture log the cake on the couch, expelling the pie tin from the bottom card. John, combine the cakes to make a double decker cake. You merge the two cakes across all five cards. Everything in your Silodex is smushed between the cakes. Why don't you think these things through first? John, retreat upstairs. You pause at the juncture and head down the hall. You're going to need something to clean up the, the mess you are about to make by dissecting this cake. To the left is the bathroom. To the right is your dad's room. It is locked and you are forbidden from ever entering. He has secrets. You would think that John's bedroom is down this hall, but nope. His bedroom is actually right here, and it, con and it still confuses me to this day. John, go to the bathroom and grab a towel. You enter the bathroom. You can see your backyard from the window. The jewel in its crown is a swing set, which has provided you with years of joy. There is also a spring-mounted pogo ride, which has been responsible for more than one painful injury, and has provided you with years of lament. On the sink is your dad's razor. On the rack to the side is a fresh towel. John, remove PDA envelope and package from cake. You take the razor and use it to perform surgery on the cake. You take the towel and clean off the extracted goods. Meow. John, retrieve your items. The items force the manhandled cake into the toilet. And just like that, your Silodex is full again. God, this thing is annoying. John, go to the bedroom. John, admire failure to launch poster. You're not usually in a chick flicks, but Matthew McConaughey's cool charisma could salvage any heap of smoldering wreckage. This is your McConaughey wall, a casual shrine to an amazing actor. The film above that one is a lot better, you think. Can you see her? I want you to picture that little girl. Now imagine she's white. 
You got us, Matthew. Your smooth talking exposes our latent racism. Damn, you're good. S. John, check Pester Chum. I don't think there's any need to mute the music because it just Pester Chum sounds. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Garnostic began pestering Echobiologist at 16.34. I have never tried to do a voice for Garnostic yet, so, uh... <clears throat> uh, it's probably going to be bad, but I'll try to make it better later on when she talks more. <clears throat> Hi! Uh, bleh, no, that sucks. <laughs> Hi! Uh... Hi, happy birthday, John Hart. Hello. Okay, I will talk to you later. Garnostic sees pesting echobiologist at 1656. The voice cracks are strong with this one. <laughs> Turn tech godhead begin pesting echobiologist at 1640. Hey, GG is looking for you. Why are you even so popular all of a sudden? Is today some sort of special occasion or something? Did you do something to curry favor with late... With ladies, did you break your leg on a puppy or some shit? Dude, what are you doing? Turn tight godhead, TG is now an idle chum. I discovered a comet that is about that is going to destroy the earth, and it was named after me. Now I am famous and everyone wants to talk to me a lot. No, stop, just no. Don't talk about your awful stupid movies or make references to them. Your gross man bro crush on Matt McConaughey is an unsavory thing to behold. McConaughey. Sounds like a dumb noise. And it sounds like a noise. Sounds like a noise a horse would make. I e dumb. Equally dumb are all those pictures of that clown you got hanging up. Those are my dad's. Oh, he's talking about Nick Cage. Oh, what? No, man. Cage is sweet. So sweet. Haha, <laughs> so lame. You don't even like him ironically or anything. This is like for real, isn't it? Haha. <laughs> I do things ironically sometimes. What about what I sent you for a year birthday? No, those are awesome. What? No, they're stupid, which was the joke. The ironic joke. Get it? Wait. You're actually wearing them, aren't you? I'm wearing them ironically, because they're awesome. The fact that they're ironic makes them awesome and vice versa. Are you taking notes on how to be cool? Jesus, get a fucking pen. You do realize they touch Stiller's weird sort of god face at some point. Ew, yeah. Oh well. Anyway, speaking of which, did you get the mail? Yeah. Did there happen to be a red package there? Yeah, there's a big red one. You should probably open it. I would, but it's trapped under the suburb beta, so I will probably open it after I install the beta. Oh man, the beta came? Yeah, wanna play it? <laughs> no way. Why not? It sounds so hoes and boring. Just get TT to play it. She is all about that. Where'd she go? Her internet is blinking in and out, I guess. Probably be back online soon. Oh, and Christ, in the sidecar, are you still using the stack mode? Seriously, dude, you need to bone up on your data structures. That shit is just ridiculous. Okay, I will. John, open browser and go to mspaintadventures.com. If you don't know what mspaintadventures.com is, and uh, you, got, you got into Homestuck after the domain change to homestuck.com, it was originally... Well, you can't really go to it, but, uh, way back machine. Let's, let's try going here. Let's, let's go to when Homestuck first came out. This is what it looked like back then. I, I've never actually looked into the original, like, what... It really looked like here. MS Paint Adventures. And then the most freaking recent. Oh. Oh, heck no. Let's go here. 2016. This is what it looks like. Uh, be like. This is what it looked like in the little. Uh, This is what it looks like in low stretch be before uh, home stuff before the real domain change. 
there is little news on the bottom and uh also there is there's something else I wanna look at. I kinda of forgot it now. Heck. I guess I'll just keep that open in the background. But now you know the context. Oh yeah, I remember the the original homestuck.com. Homestuck.com used to have something different before. Let's go to freaking here. Oh. Let's see if I can find it. Uh come on. Can't be that hard to find. No, not there. Come on. Aha! Homestuck. A little tale about some kids who play a game. What is Homestuck? One of the most spectacular pop culture phenomenon of the past decade, beloved by millions of readers. A unique and massive internet-based narrative work consisting of webcomics, chat logs, GIFs, games, animation, and music. What's Homestuck about? On his 13th birthday, John Egbert starts playing a mysterious video game called Suburb. Unfortunately, this triggers the apocalypse. Fortunately, he and his friends can create the universe anew if they can beat the game, but there's another group of players trolling them to unknown ends, and a big bad who might be impossible to defeat. They'll need a lot of teamwork, a little luck, and some in some inspired shenanigans along the way to make it through this mind-bending, general-defying adventure. Want to know more? Confused? Disoriented? Yes? Check out the Homesick Weedy Wiki on Fandom. Would you like to play a game? How about a point-and-click adventure based on the Homesick Universe? Play Hive Swap. Looking for Homesick music, merch, and more? There are some fine purveyors of goods to investigate. What pumpkin? Looking for beautiful Homesick art prints? This is the place to get them. We love fine. For fans, by fans. This is the... The place to uh, buy all things Homestuck. Homestuck Band Camp. Listen to and download all the music you love from Homestuck. Want to keep up with the na latest news? What pumpkin? Twitter, Tumblr. And that's about it. Did they? Hmm. Did what pumpkin actually own the site? Because I thought this was like a fan site telling people about this who like typed in homesuck.com instead of mspaadventures.com <laughs> Anyway... <clears throat> John, open browser and go to mspaadventures.com You decide to space out on the computer for a while before doing anything important. You open the typhiest web browser and direct it to what is indisputably the most amazing website ever created. The Midnight Crew. The new adventure is okay, but you're not sure if you like it as much as the last one. John, install the Suburb Beta. You decide it's time for less meta and more beta. You insert the CD and install the Suburb Beta. Suburb version 0.0.1. Skynet Systems Incorporated, all rights reserved. Suburb client is running, waiting for server to establish connection. What the fuck is this? John, bone up on data structures. Ghost Dad! <laughs> you go to your closet where you keep a lot of clothes and an array of handy computer programming guides. Let's go over all the puns here. Over here, we have data structures, which is, uh, covered in oil. But, that's not important right now. That's not important for thousands and thousands of pages. The 7,000 to be exact. Data structures, there's no pun here yet. Discrete mathematics, I don't get that one. This little up symbol, it, this is basically saying carrot cake. This is a, called a carrot, I guess? I don't know. This is tilde F. So it's basically saying, till death. 
This dis asterisk disarray. Automata? I don't get this one. <laughs> John, read data structures book. Data structures for assholes by Buckminster Funny Uncle. I think my rage just crapped its pace. Funny Uncle, your ignorance just made me throw up a little. Get a clue, you computer illiterate piece of shit. Free fetch modus and back. You're not sure you really want to dig into this huge tome. It looks really boring and kind of ornery. Maybe you just check out that free modus instead. You're calling this boring? I mean, it seems mean, but not boring. John, get free fetch modus. You turn to the back inside cover, where a free fetch modus is included in a plastic sleeve. This one is dictated by the logic of a queue data structure, operating on a first-in, first-out method, rather than a first-in, last-out method of a stack. John, apply fetch modus to Silidex. Items capsule on your Silidex are no longer immediately accessible. You can only use the item on the bottom card, and must wait for items on the upper cards to be pushed back to it. For instance, the red package is now inaccessible. You can only use the razor at the moment. This modus doesn't strike you as a significant upgrade to your previous one. In fact, it seems almost it almost seems more inconvenient. You figure you might as well give it a chance though. I mean, orange is a nice color. Why but hot pink is better. It's of course it's a downgrade. John Switch back to stack modus. You suddenly wonder if this is even possible. I don't even remember if you ever had a physical card for the stack modus. You find this all to be a little abstract and you prefer not to think about it too much. John, put down Razor. Put it down? You're not quite sure you understand. John, pick up two items. You capsulog one of the cake. You finally you found a use for all these loitering pastries. Dead weight. John, get other cake. Uh, oh fuck, it just cut off some of his hair. <laughs> the second cake causes the ranger to launch out of the front of your Silidex. Oh good lord, that beautiful face. You wish you wish the ranger would have failed to launch. John, get more stuff. You open your magic chest and capsule log one of your favorite books of all time. Wise Guy by Mike Cavey. There goes a fresh towel. John, might as well grab those cuffs. How long have I... I'm about to stop recording. But... Oh god. You take the trick handcuffs, expelling the PDA like a bullet. Well, Good job, John. You hecked it all up. Your dad's going to ground you. <laughs> it's all your fault, John. <laughs> oh, god damn it. John, open up that package. To EB from TG. You examine the package. It's from one of your internet chums. It's bound in packing tape, though. You need something sharp to open it. Ah, of course, the razor. It's all so simple. You wonder why you didn't. And let's leave this on a cliffhanger because page 126. Page 126. Let me just rediscover Fuse and Remix. That's where we left off on the music. All right. Save game. We'll be back to this uh, next week, I guess. But if you are just getting into Homestuck and you watch this to, like, really get into it, I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I'm going to try to get a better mic next week. So I don't sound, like, very muffled. We'll see. Thanks for watching. It. I appreciate it.